what happens to transactions in stale blocks or blocks that are basically orphaned or end up on a minority chain. Well, um, if any transactions that were in that block, if they weren't in the block that replaced it, they go back in the mempool. Um, so every node will remove the block, the transactions that actually did get mined into a block. And if a block gets uh, orphaned um, or the chain reorganizes around that block, then all of the transactions go back in the mempool unless they're on the other chain. Um, generally speaking, if you have two blocks that um, get mined near simultaneously, one of those blocks will be successful, the other one eventually will get orphaned. And as a result, that block uh, will have its transactions replayed. But most of those transactions um, will coincide. So two blocks mined at approximately the same time may have 90% the same transactions, 95% the same transaction. So really only the 5% that didn't get uh, put into the um, alternative block are the ones that need to go back in the mempool for inclusion in the next block. Nothing gets lost though. Um, they just wait a bit longer. Um, it's the same as if they hadn't had sufficient fee. So if they hadn't been picked in that round, um, they will get mined eventually. Jun asks, Andreas, I submitted a small transaction to send BTC to another address, and it has been pending for over a week now. I was testing to see if I would be able to send a transaction for the lowest fee of one Satoshi per byte. I'm afraid the transaction is stuck and cannot be double spent with a higher fee, because the wallet gives me an error that it's in the mempool. Is there anything I can do to cancel my transaction on my end, or will I have to wait until it drops off the mempool in order to resend it with a higher fee? Thank you, Andreas. All right. Jun, great question. This is a really important question that affects a lot of beginners in Bitcoin. And really what you're experiencing is a combination of a mempool that is a marketplace for transactions, where if you want your transaction prioritized, you're competing against others, and your own wallet, which may have um, a uh, certain policies and approaches to how it does transactions that may not be ideal. So, first of all, is it possible to send a one Satoshi per byte fee? Absolutely. Every single transaction I do, um, I pay one Satoshi per byte. I haven't paid more than one Satoshi per byte, um, I think, since February. So, uh, it is absolutely possible to send with one Satoshi per byte. Um, and those transactions do get confirmed. However, in order to do that, I'm using a wallet that gives me options for managing the narrow cases, which happen one in ten transactions. I'll have a problem where it gets stuck, just like you've experienced here. And when that happens, my wallet gives me two ways to unstick that transaction. The first one is called replace by fee which means that my initial transaction is marked as RBF, meaning it is uh, able to be replaced by a transaction spending a higher fee. It's not the final version of that transaction, if you like. And there may be subsequent transactions that spend it with a higher fee. Now, by doing that, um, really that's just um, a, an extra signal to the miners, um, because the miners can choose to take a double spent higher fee transaction if your wallet can create it, regardless of whether you say it's replaced by fee or not. Um, because miners will always use an algorithm that maximizes their profit. So if they have two transactions and one of them is a double spend of a previous transaction with a higher fee, and that first transaction hasn't been confirmed, they'll take the higher fee. It doesn't matter if you're signaling RBF or not. Although some miners will uh, look for RBF transactions, and the algorithm will treat them favorably if there is a replacement transaction. Really, what that is about is your wallet knowing how to manage that double spend situation. So that is one technique, replace by fee. The other technique is called child pays for parent. And again, this is not like a magical feature that is instructing the miners what to do. It's simply recognizing 
that miners will always maximize their profit and take the transaction or chain of transactions with the highest fee. Child Pays for Parents says, my first transaction doesn't have enough fee per byte to confirm. What I'm going to do is chain a second child transaction that depends on spending the first one with a higher fee. And what miners will do in their um, algorithm that selects transactions from the mempool is they don't look at how many satoshis per byte in each transaction. Instead, they look at how many satoshis per byte in each chain of unconfirmed transactions. So if you have a parent and a child, their total satoshis of fees are divided by the total bytes, so that the miner can make a determination in their best interest that if they confirm both of them together, they can get a better satoshi per byte rate than if they don't confirm the first one because you can't confirm the second one. So child pays for parent again is a technique used by the wallet that recognizes that miners transaction selection algorithms will be based on maximizing their profit. The wallets I use, uh, Samurai, Electrum, for example, um, tend to support these capabilities and allow me to do that. You can actually construct a child pays for parent transaction uh, if you construct it manually, if your wallet isn't allowing it. So back to your question, Jun. You said you're afraid the transaction is stuck and cannot be double spent with a higher fee because the wallet gives me an error that it's in the mempool. That doesn't mean it cannot be spent by um, a higher fee. That means your wallet is refusing to do it. If you manually construct a double spend transaction with a higher fee using another wallet, for example, that supports that, it will go through, and you'll be able to nudge that transaction through the mempool. So, the way I do transactions is I always start with the absolute lowest fee possible. I mark the transaction as replaced by fee. I let it sit in the mempool. If it's urgent, um, for example, if I have a 15-minute window because I'm doing a retail transaction, I'm going to check on it and see how it's sitting in the mempool, and I might bump it immediately if, if I see that I miscalculated the fee. But if it's not urgent and I have you know, a day, like for example, today is the 1st of September, I'm about to run payroll. And payroll is uh, in my company is Bitcoin. So I'm go about to do a whole bunch of transactions. Um, in fact, they're multi-recipient transactions where I pay my staff in Bitcoin. And those are transactions where, quite honestly, they don't need to get it in the next 15 minutes. Um, as long as it goes through today or early tomorrow, it's good enough. So. That means I have a 144 block window to get them through, which means I don't need to worry about the fee. One Satoshi per byte will work. If, by some weird coincidence, the moment I decide to do that, there is a massive rally or the mempool gets absolutely chock full of transactions, I might have to bump it. So I'm going to replace by fee. I'm also going to use child pays for parents, which, uh, which sometimes works faster to confirm that transaction and to get my payroll through.